Hi, my name is Shabir Musa. I'm the Executive Coordinator of African Forum for Primary Health Care, and this lecture is about introducing you to primary health care. Let's all start with the Alma Ata in 1978. Many of us refer to that, and in fact, it is a very seminal document. The document in general talks about the gross inequality in health status, which is of common concern to all countries, um, that it is a fundamental human right to have health, and that health is an important worldwide social goal. It also speaks about the idea of health being complete, physical, mental, and social well-being, and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity, an important idea. It also suggests that a main social target of governments should be the attainment by all peoples in the world by the year 2000 of a socially and economically productive life. And we can see that we have not achieved that. They see this primary health care as an integral part of a country's health system leading to the social and economic development of the community. Alma Ata in 1978 specifically describes primary health care as essential health care, which is at the first level of contact of individuals, the family and community. It also addresses the main health problems in the community, providing preventive, promotive, curative and rehabilitative services. It is supposed to be comprehensive and continuing. The idea of integrated is mentioned as integrated health uh, functional and mutually supportive referral systems. And you'll see later that this becomes quite a change in the way in which primary health care is thought of. It also includes in 1978, the idea that water, sanitation and common diseases and injuries are part of the equation of primary health care. And that primary health care needs to be using socially acceptable methods and technology that there needs to be community participation. Health workers, in fact, in 1978, were seen as for primary health care, including physicians, nurses, midwives, auxiliaries, and community health workers as applicable, as well as traditional healers. It is indeed a very seminal document. It also, in 1978, exhorts governments to exercise political will to mobilize the country's resources and to use external resources rationally. But it also mentions that the efforts towards primary health care will re need to reflect economic conditions and social and political, social cultural and political characteristics of the country. And specifically at a cost that the community and country can afford to maintain at their stage, at every stage of their development in the spirit of self-reliance and self-determination. It also exhorts the countries of the world to better use the world's resources. The criticism, critique of the implementation of primary health of uh, Alma Ata has been that even though there was such a very broad seminal document in place, um, many of the AIDS agencies, especially UNICEF, um, chose to in fact go about selective primary health care versus comprehensive primary health care. And we're all familiar with the GOBI FFF um, of uh, UNICEF. There were also problems with the fact that there was no funding, that there was poor global social solidarity, and that AIDS funding came with its own priorities that undermined country priorities. There was also this growing power of hospitals and specialism across the world, which undermined the move towards primary health care. There was also no specific way laid out in which equity and community participation could be uh, prioritized or institutionalized. And also the words primary care and primary health care became interchangeable and there was no coherent way in which that could be um, thought of. In the in between 1978 to 2008, when 30 years later, there was another seminal document in primary health care, there was uh, very little discourse around primary health care specifically, but there were important documents that came out from the WHO and other leading global agencies that are material to primary health care. One such is the Millennium Development Goals, 
um, where the child mortality, maternal mortality and HIV AIDS, malaria became the priority issues. And it tended to reflect that selective primary health care approach that let's focus on a few things and get them right. However, in World Health, in the World Health Report of 2008, 2000 on health systems, uh, there were beginning to be issues raised that um, where there were changes in the emphasis that perhaps were there in Alma Ata. Um, it started talking about same, providing health services, generating human and physical resources, and raising funds. But the idea also began to emerge that governments public health systems were not the only ones that needed to be um, uh, providing health care and that governments needed to see their roles as stewardship. In other words, to bring other health care actors um, in countries together and stewarding them as governments and this specifically the non-government as well as private sector. And this was an important idea in the World Health Report of 2000. In the World Health Report of 2006, um, there was a, which is a, a workshop, a workforce focused document. Um, it's no, made no specific mention of primary health care or, pro, or the HR challenges related to it. And the focus seemed to be only on community health workers, again, reflecting that selective primary health care approach. The Commission on Social Determinants of Health, which was in 2008, um, spoke of this key idea that we're not really winning and in fact that lots of the primary health care challenges lie um, and particularly the social determinants of health um, lie in the deep inequities in the distribution of power and economic arrangements globally and that these are quite important to health equity. So you can see that there has been a lot of battling between selective and comprehensive primary health care across this 30 years um, before another report uh, came on the scene, which is the World Health Report of 2008 on primary health care. And in that report, there are four things that are put forward. One is that we need to talk of, a, of universal coverage and that it needs to move towards universal health access and social health protection, partly in response to the health inequities that, were, uh, that are predominant across the world. But an important other idea is about how do we reorganize health, health services around patient or people's needs and that service delivery reforms. And the third one is that we need to look at primary health care being integrated with public health actions. And the last one was about leadership reforms, which I'll go into briefly. So I'll go into these, each one of them, as this report in 2008 is quite an important 30th anniversary of Alma Ata. It restates the ideas, but it uh, shows some subtle differences. Well, it first raises in the introduction the challenges of a changing world. That 30 years later, we have still this challenge of unequal growth and unequal outcomes. And yet we, in fact, have a new health challenge from 30 years on, that we are having a much more globalized population. They're very much more urbanized and they're much more aged, aged and older. And that governments have not responded very well and have not created responsive health systems. They also spoke to uh, trends which are undermining the way in which health governments are responding. One is health uh, hospital centrism, that in fact lots of the um, progress globally um, has been undermined by hospitals being very uh, predominant and especially in low and middle income countries around elites and that the systems that are being built around priority programs that are driven by selective primary health care are actually creating fragmentation that are tra challenging health systems, particularly primary health care systems. And that in fact, in especially in low middle income countries where they are very um, poor public health systems that commercialization of the private sector is being left unchecked and growing substantially and that governments are not seeing themselves as stewards of the entire health system. They also raise that in the in the changing world that people themselves, voters, ordinary citizens in this globalized world are having changing values and rising expectations. They want health equity. They want care that puts people first. 
They want to secure the health of communities and has a sense of social solidarity and that they want that their health systems, health authorities are responsible and reliable and they want to be part participating in health system delivery issues. Um, and I think that any health reform um, needs to be driven by these demands that are coming from ordinary citizens across the globe. So the key ideas, four key ideas that are in there start with universal coverage, that the idea of, of uh, health equity um, needs to be driven by the idea of primary health care being central to it, and thus central to the idea of universal health coverage. And of course, the way in which that is seen um, using this uh, cube um, is that it needs to be able to reduce and um, cover more people until it covers everyone, that it needs to include, um, reduce the cost to people and reducing it to as much as little as possible. Um, that's total, uh, that's basically out of pocket expenditure as well as catastrophic health expenditure, um, as well as finding ways in which as many services are included um, in the cover to the entire population at the least cost possible um, and that that the quality also improves um, in terms of this quality of the service. And I think that in, 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 in moving towards primary universal coverage and specifically primary health care, um, there is the challenge of ruling out um, primary health care networks and overcoming the isolation of dispersed populations, usually rural populations, and looking at ways in which one can deal with this, uh, with the um, including the primary care, uh, the private sector in it. Um, they basically in this idea of universal coverage talk of targeted interventions, how they can find ways to do this in this document, and that there's need to mobilize um, for health equity. So finding the resources, um, increasing the visibility of um, health equi inequities, and also creating space for social part socials, uh, participation and empowerment. And these are the ways in which this document in 2008 sees um, the agenda for primary health care and universal coverage being addressed. The second very important idea in this uh, World Health Report in 2008 is the idea that primary care needs to put, that's primary care as the delivery system of the health care um, system broadly, um, needs to put people first. And I think that we know that verticalized systems, uh, fragmented health systems actually um, detract from the idea of people uh, as human beings that are rather seen as numbers. And I think it talks about, you know, if care is about, good care is about people, it needs to have distinctive features, um, which is that it needs to be not just seen as technical safety and effectiveness, uh, but subjective, that people feel that they are, that they are, uh, the service is effective, that this is person-centered, um, that's what this um, care needs to be about, that it needs to be comprehensive and integrated responses. With continuity of care, um, and also an important idea that the uh, provider needs to be, the, as the entry point in primary health care, needs to be trusted and regular, and not just indiscriminate um, you know, uh, use of the primary care system as we are currently happening. happening. And in terms of doing that, they talk about organizing primary care networks that bring uh, care closer to the people um, and that, are, that the care system is in fact responsible for a well-defined population and that the primary health care team is seen as this um, hub of coordination of this well-defined population. And these ideas are very important a distinction to where Al Amal Ata was, and I think it reflects this growing conversation um, in primary health care. How do we actually make primary health care much more effective? 
Um, it still, in, in 2008, emphasizes the importance of public health as the broader idea of primary health care being um, you know, important to primary health care and that public health policies need to be able to align themselves to primary health care and this needs much more than the primary care system. It needs a countrywide public health initiatives, uh, rapid responses that need to be there, uh, looking at policies uh, apart from health policies, so other education, social, um, um, financial, etc., policies that incorporate health, specifically primary health care, so that um, we can have a primary health care approach that is uh, much better organized. And to be able to do that, it needs better information. The institutions need to be set up and there needs to be global health action that's, um, that's uh, coordinated to be efficient and equ equitable. The last idea in this document is basically that there needs to be this um, stewardship role of government, that governments should be seen as providing leadership and effectively, and that they should be brokers for primary health care reform, looking beyond the primary public service to all other actors and trying to mediate a social contract for health. Um, and that if it is not engaged, um, it creates many challenges in the health system where um, it is competing informally with the private sector and unable to effect reforms. Um, it also stresses the fact that governments need to get social and community participation broadly and that these actors need to be brought in and negotiated with, which um, is a challenge in many low middle income countries. And to be able to do that, there needs to be information systems and that we need to look at innovations across um, um, the country beyond the public service and that bringing them together uh, includes creating a critical mass of capacity within government as well as within the collective that's uh, looking for change. And this ultimately is a political process that governments need to embrace globally. So the document ends by saying that the way forward, of course, is going to be country specific. Um, but that the way in which we can mobilize towards that is looking at knowledge, the workforce and the people, um, people's participation. So a very important document in 2008. So what happened since 2008 to 2018 when there was another seminal document? Well, the WHA with the World Health Assembly resolved similarly um, along the lines of the um, report in 2009, where it sort of um, a, a, a accepted that it needs to put people at the center of health care by adopting appropriate um, delivery uh, models and that it needed to uh, focus on models that provided comprehensive primary health care uh, where there is active participation by all people and in fact uh, emphasizes the training of adequate numbers um, of healthcare workers with appropriate skills mix uh, including primary health care nurses, midwives, allied health professions, uh, and, and family physicians able to work in a multidisciplinary context uh, in cooperation with community health workers in order to respond effectively to people's health needs. So it tended to um, refine and be much more specific in decisions about how it wants to see that. And I think what's important is that it, it, it reflected on these vertical programs um, specifically these disease-specific programs to say that they need to be integrated and we need an integrated healthcare system that in fact speaks to individuals and how they should be experiencing the healthcare at primary care level. It also speaks again of accountable leadership of the health sector and multi-sectoral action. Well, the World Health Report in 2010, which is around financing, um, uh, towards universal coverage um, puts out um, lots of these issues of financing that need to be dealt with. Um, but primary health care is, is, is enshrined there as a priority. And in fact, the WHO in, in, in further arguing uh, in 2013 for UHC uh, says that the uh, UHC is ultimately a pro pro political process and that we have to be able to understand the tension between hospital care and primary health care and that in fact that needs to be addressed politically in each country. 
In 2016, um, the global strategy on human resources for, for health um, speaks much more clearly to the efficient um, use of resources and better alignment community needs and that there needs to be this person-centered healthcare uh, delivery model uh, with a diverse sustainable skills mixed uh, with effective referral and links aligned uh, alignment with market forces and population expectations and also the integration of disease specific programs into primary health care strategies but unfortunately it does little to spell out how that actually happens and specific guidance um, in, um, in, in low middle income countries where um, fragmented health systems, cheaper selective approaches, verticalized programs still uh, predominate. An important initiative um, in this time has been the Primary Health Care Performance Initiative, which looked at how do we um, deliver a service, how do we make service delivery much more uh, person-centered. And in fact, many more measures have been included in, 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 uh, um, in trying to help governments to understand um, that context of what do we mean by high quality primary health care and specifically what does first contact accessibility, continuity, comprehensive coordination and person-centered care mean and are we achieving them? Um, of course, on the ground, we know that that's very poor, but this um, initiative is in fact to try and develop that data at a local level across the world um, and, and build up a profile of how well we're doing as uh, we are proceeding to, to look at that definitive um, idea of person-centered care. Well, uh, the Al Ma'ata was an important document in 2018. A global conference on primary health care was held in the exact place where Al Ma'ata was, uh, was set up in Astana in uh, Kazakhstan. And um, what it did on the 40-year um, anniversary of the Al Ma'ata is to perhaps re-emphasize the ideas in Al Ma'ata with a few um, uh, variables, very variations. But Al Ma'ata has not changed very much. The ideas have not changed very much. And the problem lies, in fact, in the implementation and specifically the equity issues. So it still envisions primary health care that is high quality, safe, comprehensive, integrated, accessible, available, and affordable for everyone and everywhere, provided with compassion, respect, and dignity by health professionals who are well trained, skilled motivated and committed. It speaks of UHC and specifically that primary health care is a cornerstone of sustainable health systems for universal coverage. And you can see in the conceptual framework around the standard declaration that primary health care at the bottom and essential public health care functions are the core of integrated health systems to be able to provide health and well-being but that it also is matched by multi-sectoral policy, um, that's health in all policies, and also empowered people and communities. Um, I think the only distinction, the only little change uh, from the PHC uh, Almata declaration is that re palliative care has found its way in describing primary health care, otherwise much the same. An important thing about Astana is that it has set out what are uh, operational frameworks. How do we help countries to effect this? Um, and it talks of governance, uh, policy and uh, finance levers as being the strategic levers, but then a specific operational levers, um, which the um, WHO seeks to try and guide uh, globally. And one of those that, that, that are quite important distinctions from the Alma Ata are the fact that it look, it's looking at how do we create models of care that prioritize primary care and public health functions and also bring up the idea of engagement with the private care, private sector providers and that it brings up the ideas also of purchasing and payment systems uh, as distinctly different from the Alma Ata uh, declaration. So these are kind of the changing conversations of primary health care 40 years later. Still very much the same ideas of Alma Ata, but with slight distinctions in how do we actually implement primary health care better as we've envisaged uh, many years ago.
So it's still seen as uh, primary health care being first contact, comprehensive, promotive, curative, rehabilitative, and palliative care. Um, that it is in fact comprehensive um, and not limited to all these narrow services that are being uh, provided and that it is accessible, equitable, high quality, comprehensive, efficient, acceptable, available and affordable, but that specifically it's going to be continuous integrated services that are people-centered and gender-centered sensitive and that it seeks to avoid fragmentation in the entire system and then also ensure a functional referral system, which are key distinctions from the Alma Ata. So in terms of implementation since 2018, um, there's a report in uh, by the WHO in 2019 which says that we're struggling and it's largely because of weak health systems uh, that are combined with socioeconomic factors that are impeding coverage. And I think inequity is the core problem behind that. Inequity that results in people's socioeconomic determinants of health and the actual primary health care uh, plans in country. Um, and the report ends by saying that UHC and PHC is in fact a political choice. Um, and of course, the question is, um, how do we actually achieve that? Um, and I think that the, the, there was a high-level meeting in 2019 uh, which speaks to this question which brought together everyone around uni universal coverage and in, it was seen as primary health care being a critical milestone to achieving UHC, which is the big conversation globally. Uh, again, emphasizing all the same things, saying that PHC provides a platform for integrating previously separate services, um, addressing the questions of um, the missteps of the last 40 years, um, but and saying that it is the most cost-effective way to address comprehensive health services close to health systems. And in fact, in WHO, the 2020 uh, document on draft operation framework, uh, again, um, takes the ideas from within the uh, Stana Declaration to say that we are going to look closely at integrated healthcare services with an emphasis on primary health care and public service functions doing much the same kind of things that we've been talking about. Um, but say speaking of the integration as a key question in terms of service delivery, um, speaking to the multi-sectoral policy actions, bringing together the idea of um, various um, the, of, of the idea of uh, bringing together social determinants of health as well as bringing the different actors including the private sector and looking at ways in which uh, that might happen and then looking at empowered health communities and this is the um, idea of how WHO sees itself um, pushing the agenda um, for primary health care going forward within the financing um, ideas that are um, talked about in universal health coverage, um, where governments are seen as changing the equation, um, as has been mentioned in 2008, of bringing the private sector together and finding ways in which um, strategic purchasing can rearrange the health system um, to provide an overall health care system bringing public and private together. Just a, uh, a, a, a quick rider on the WHO. Whilst these documents since 1978 have spoken to the um, you know, seminal documents of the WHO, knowing how the WHO functions and is an um, important idea for any student in global health to understand, the WHO, while it is an agency that is um, um, globally supported, um, the WHO is in a bureaucratic you know, agency in, uh, in Geneva. Um, firstly, it is large um, and, and has lots of bureaucratic systems dictated to by an assembly of all governments across the world, which in themselves are uh, deciding how the WHO works. Um, often the WHO tries to um, put forward very progressive thinking, but it's dis the decisions being made at, at, at the World Health Assembly of individual governments and the inequity in the world where stronger 
more powerful governments can push their own agenda is very dominant there and um, and ultimately they can go away and do as they will the who has no way to police and punish or do anything to any government at all and in fact their own budget is held hostage not only by those governments but in fact by leading AIDS agencies um, that that contribute to the World Health uh, Organization. So the World Health Organization, whilst it is a very useful and important platform for putting forward important policies, um, we in the world are still subject to the politics of the world, the, the global political economy. And that is really the crux um, of the poor progress we see in primary health care. And I want to leave you in ending with the simple idea that governments, national governments across the world, um, they spend all across the entire world 7.5 trillion. And you can imagine that lots of governments, lots of countries um, like the USA, EU, etc. are spending this um, indulgently on very poor health systems sometimes um, and Yet, to be able to look at the entire globe, if we are to achieve these primary health care targets globally, all we need to do is to add a 200 billion um, from these 7.5 trillion to the current spend across the globe, and that only costs 2.6%. Um, yet, we'd be able to achieve these targets. Um, and to achieve more comprehensive UHC targets, Add another 170 billion from the 7.5 trillion that's being spent across the world. That's only 2.3 percent, and we would be able to achieve UHC comprehensive targets across the globe, saving many, many million lives. Yet the political will is not that of small governments in low-middle-income countries. The political will lies in large, powerful governments who actually don't support global solidarity. Well, COVID-19 is the test case, and you can see that not all governments are passing the test. In fact, very few are. And global social solidarity is the crux in the difficulty in us achieving primary health care globally. So thank you very much. I hope that this has given you an understanding of what primary health care is. Um, there is certainly a lot um, that can be shared more about primary health care and how one can translate primary health care on the ground in an integrated manner and that I will share in another lecture um, and we can also talk about how that might be achieved specifically in an African um, setting um, and how we can work towards that agenda in Africa. So thank you very much, here are my details and I hope that you found this, this lecture useful. Thank you.